You know, I feel like I'm wasting the good stuff here. Is, is the man not going to be joining us? The man? Yeah. I should save this if he's going to... He doesn't do this kind of thing anymore. Cameos? Meetings. Meetings. Welcome back, everyone. It's Charlie. Ryan Reynolds, Hugh Jackman, and Marvel have started revealing all the deleted scenes, alternate storylines, and alternate cameo scenes that were cut out of the movie. You could fill several other movies with the stuff that didn't make it into the final movie. Kevin Feige even revealed Ryan Reynolds pitched him 20 different versions of the movie before he said yes to one, so we'll break it all down. If you're brand new to the channel, be sure to subscribe to get all the videos. We also have D23 coming this weekend. We might get our first big Daredevil Born Again trailer. Of course, I will do all the videos for whatever they wind up releasing this weekend. Starting with one of the biggest things that got changed, one of the original planned endings at Comic-Con this year, Marvel announced Robert Downey Jr. was returning, but not as Iron Man or an Iron Man variant like Superior Iron Man. He was coming back as Victor Von Doom, Doctor Doom, from another universe, likely the Fantastic Four movie universe that we're going to see in that new movie. They haven't revealed the actual number designation of that universe yet, but in that universe's present day, it's the 1960s, and he's supposed to show up for the first time in live action in the post credit scene for that movie. Originally, we were supposed to see Robert Downey Jr. cameo during Deadpool and Wolverine. That's the whole reason why Ryan Reynolds added the joke at the beginning of the movie when he was trying out for the Avengers in the MCU during 2018, right before Avengers Infinity War happened. Smash I can assure you that that... I'm sorry, what, what was that? Uh, when you get uh, those toy Hulk hands, and you brace yourself and you ravage the midsection. I get it, the, okay, yeah, okay. Thing. In the theatrical cut, they worked in a joke that the big guy, a.k.a. Robert Downey Jr. himself, Iron Man, doesn't do cameos anymore, and that's why he wasn't doing Deadpool's interview. He was worried he was wasting all of his good material on Happy Hogan, and then proceeded to make a bunch of jokes about how Happy Hogan didn't have any superpowers. The other reason why they had the Happy Hogan scene as well was because he played a version of Foggy Nelson in Ben Affleck's Daredevil movie. So John Favreau had like his own special part of that early pre-MCU era of Marvel movies as well. But originally, Deadpool and Wolverine were supposed to pay off the early joke with Robert Downey Jr. returning at the end of the movie. Like he'd actually return as his Iron Man to pay off the cameo scene with another joke. But remember, this would have been him coming back as his Iron Man from the 616 universe because it's before Infinity War, so he still would have been alive, explaining how he could show up in that cameo scene. So because at Comic-Con, they made this big announcement about him coming back as Doctor Doom from another universe, very easy to understand why Marvel cut his cameo scene in Deadpool and Wolverine, like why it didn't wind up working out. While they were making Deadpool and Wolverine, Robert Downey Jr. finally signed his contract to return for Avengers 5 Doomsday in Secret Wars as that Doctor Doom, and Marvel wanted his first time back in the MCU to be that Fantastic Four movie post credit scene as that Doctor Doom. If they had brought him back during Deadpool and Wolverine for like a jokey post credit scene, it would have completely undercut that more serious tone of his Doctor Doom character. And they wanted his return to the MCU to be this huge twist where everybody freaks out on screen like, oh my god, it's him. But it's not him. It's Doctor Doom. So it just didn't make sense to see him in Deadpool and Wolverine as Iron Man because then people would have expected him to come back as that Iron Man in future movies like Avengers 5 and Avengers 6. I am sure there'll be enough casual fan confusion when he returns as his Doctor Doom. Like the minute he shows up on screen, if people see his face, Robert Downey Jr.'s face, they'll instantly think that it's Iron Man and will be totally confused when they try to explain the Doctor Doom of it all. But this is also part of the reason why Ryan Reynolds released that early joke about the non post credit scene in Deadpool and Wolverine. Like in the actual movie, the post credit scene they go with for Chris Evans' Fantastic Four cameo scene is just to pay off that joke from earlier in the movie when his human torch winds up prophesying or calling out the way that he winds up being killed. Make enemies with Disney, tell a few dick jokes, make a few jokes at my expense, make a lot of jokes at Hugh's expense, and completely sidestep Marvel's mandated after credit sequence, which if you haven't figured it out yet, is always just a commercial for another movie, which will invariably end with a commercial for another movie. So the joke of that post credit scene is that it doesn't really set up the next Marvel movie the way the traditional Marvel post credit scenes do. They will start doing that again. Like I said, Robert Downey Jr. coming back as his Doctor Doom, though, in the Fantastic Four movie. That will set up his appearance in Avengers 5 Doomsday. Like, that will literally be an advertisement for Avengers 5. Probably one of the next big characters that got cut early on was Nicolas Cage's Ghost Rider. There were a lot of theories about Ghost Rider being in the movie early on. Turns out they were actually going to do that. 
Ryan Reynolds revealed that they removed him mostly for budgetary reasons. The character would have required a ton of CG to do him properly, and Ryan Reynolds also said that there were a lot of other cameos that got cut purely for story-based reasons and budgetary reasons like this. It's also why they had the joke about Chris Evans' Fantastic Four cameo scene when he dies, Deadpool saying, do you know what he was doing to the budget of this movie? Speaking of more cut cameo scenes, they were going to include cameo scenes from the 2015 Fantastic Four movie. That's why you see the scene of them in the end credits, but no actual scene of them in the movie itself. They explained that those 2015 Fantastic Four characters had less of a story-based reason for existing in the movie, and they said their big rule of thumb with a lot of the cameos is that they needed to have story-based reasons for existing in the movie. They couldn't just be cameos for cameos sake. Like the one cameo that Ryan Reynolds said he considered to be more of a traditional cameo, like blink and you'll miss it, then they're gone, was Henry Cavill's cameo seen as Wolverine. More of like a funny one-off kind of joke as opposed to X-23, Blade, Gambit, Elektra, who had bigger roles in the movie, like a fundamental part of the story. Ryan Reynolds did talk a lot about Henry Cavill's cameo scene as Wolverine, the Cavalrine. He said that he was actually one of the earliest decisions they made for alternate Wolverine versions, and Henry Cavill said yes immediately, even made himself sick smoking the cigar all of a single day, like the next day he was super sick just because he doesn't like smoking cigars. He even made a mustache joke about his cameo scene after the fact, mostly because a lot of Deadpool's jokes during his cameo scene were clowning on DC over the way they treated him throughout his entire run as Superman in all the Justice League debacle, the whole mustache of it all. They originally planned to have more X-Men cameo scenes of those classic X-Men for Hugh Jackman's new Wolverine. In the movie, they explained his team of X-Men were killed by humans, which he regretted not being there to save him. It drove him to become a killing machine, slowly causing the world to turn against the X-Men and think of him as a villain. That's why everybody hates him when the movie picks up seeing his character in the bar, because he's been going around slaughtering people all over the world. They were originally going to show more flashback scenes with cameos of those original X-Men showing exactly how they died on his world. That's why in the movie, when he's explaining to X-23 and the other characters, he mentions Beast, Storm, and Cyclops specifically. They were going to be the other cameo scenes that were part of that. Kevin Feige said that we'd eventually see why they didn't include those X-Men cameos. My assumption is that most of those X-Men will return in Avengers Secret Wars from some other universe, and they just wanted a more story-based reason for them to exist in future movies, and Secret Wars will just provide that reason. It sounds like the flashback scenes that they would have got would have just shown them already being dead. So just like dead on the ground, not actually having any lines or anything like that. So they wanted to give them bigger cameo scenes and the movie didn't have space for that. The other thing about this, I know there'll be a lot of questions about the whole continuity of it all because there were five different writers on the movie and it sounds like there were many different versions of the movie that existed while they were making it. The actual theatrical cut canonizes that Deadpool is officially from the main X-Men movie universe. They're calling it Universe 10005, which previously was the X-Men First Class universe. I'd always assumed that he was part of that universe because of Deadpool 2 with their cameo scene. But during Days of Future Past, they canonized the original Brian Singer X-Men movies to the First Class universe, so all of the X-Men movies are meant to be from the same universe. I know there are always questions about the whole Colossus of it all, like why are there multiple versions of Colossus if they're all from the same universe? Deadpool has also made fun of that many times too. The movie itself makes fun of a lot of different versions of actors playing characters. He calls out that there's five different versions of the Punisher. He calls out that there's a new Juggernaut, like, oh, you're the new Juggernaut this week. Speaking of continuity, a lot of big questions about this how the movie changes the timeline of that X-Men universe because of what happens with the Logan movie in X-23 being older but in present day and the X-Men being alive now. So if it wasn't clear, the movie actually tells you that it takes place six years after 2018. So the present day of Deadpool and Wolverine is 2024 in the X-Men universe. The Logan movie took place in the distant future of that universe. But at the end of Deadpool and Wolverine, now Wolverine is alive, X-23 is now much older and in 2024 in this universe. Remember, she's not born till much, much later in the timeline, but now she's an adult in this universe here. So what they're saying now is that the Logan movie is a completely alternate timeline because now Daphne Keene being there in present day at this age changes all of that. 
And even though this Wolverine is from a different universe, the X-Men team is still alive. So like this variant can show up and join that X-Men team with X-23 if they wanted to. So here's where we also tie this to another post credit scene from another movie. Supposedly there was a deleted storyline where they were going to tie this movie to the Monica Rambeau post credit scene where she got stuck in that X-Men universe at the end of the Marvel's movie. Originally, I think they planned for her X-Men universe she got stuck in to also be the 10005 universe, Deadpool's universe. But it sounds like it just became too much story and they wanted Deadpool and Wolverine to mostly just be a love letter to that era of Marvel movies from before the MCU. So they wanted to be a little more self-contained, just kind of bumping up a little bit against the MCU. Like they make a bunch of MCU jokes. They use the TVA from the Loki series. So they're like kind of brushing up against the MCU. But at the end of the movie, they all go back to that X-Men universe. He doesn't go to the MCU at the end of the movie. So I think they just weren't ready to like fully tie this to the MCU. And maybe in the future, what they'll say is that that Beast post credit scene, the X-Men universe, will just set up Secret Wars at some point, and they'll tie that to the Deadpool movie. Ryan Reynolds also revealed that Walker Scobell was originally going to play Kidpool, like everyone assumed he would. If you didn't see a number of years ago, when he was filming The Atom Project with Ryan Reynolds, they were filming a scene in between scenes. He did this entire Deadpool 2 monologue, which impressed the hell out of Ryan Reynolds. Originally, they were going to have him play Kidpool, like be the foul mouth Kidpool that you see in the movie. The reason why it wound up being Ryan Reynolds' real life daughter, Inez Reynolds, is because in the time it took them to actually make Deadpool and Wolverine, Walker Scobell grew so much that he would just look like a normal adult version of Deadpool in the costume if they put him in a Deadpool costume. So it wouldn't really make sense. They wanted their Kidpool to be like a very, very tiny kid version of Deadpool. This is actually a big shocker. Originally, Mephisto was going to be the big bad of the movie, not Cassandra Nova. I think the early reasoning is they wanted a crazier multiverse cosmic level villain on the void. In the comics, there are many versions of Mephisto across other universes. They have their own version of the Council of Reeds or like the Council of Kangs called the Council of Red. Just to explain how there could be a Mephisto variant ruling over the void. Supposedly, though, Marvel already filmed scenes with Sasha Baron Cohen as another version of Mephisto for the Ironheart series in the MCU and a couple other things. So I think they decided they didn't want a bunch of different concurrent versions of Mephisto running around. And also, because the movie was trading heavily on X-Men, Fantastic Four, and nostalgia, it just made more sense for the villain of the movie to be based on X-Men mythology. And even though Mephisto has shown up in X-Men comics before, he hasn't really shown up in any of those original X-Men movies. So like they wanted fans going in to see the movies to trade more heavily on that nostalgia. Ryan Reynolds also said they did try to film a fastball special with Wolverine, but in the movie, the version that they were going to do was them using Toad for the fastball special. They filmed it, but it didn't wind up making the final cut. The closest we got to an actual fastball special in live action was during X-Men Last Stand. Also, the closest we've seen to Wolverine smoking cigars. Apparently, in real life, Hugh Jackman really doesn't like smoking in movies, which is why you don't see Wolverine smoking cigars all the time when he appears in movies. Daphne Keene said that she had to redo a lot of her X-23 scenes in the movie when they first meet the Resistance team of variants, like when they all start walking in. All because Channing Tatum's gambit was so hilarious when he was just spouting off all of his crazy dialogue that you could barely understand. That was also part of the joke, too, is that Deadpool could not understand what he was saying. He even breaks the fourth wall to say that they're missing all kinds of critical exposition because his dialogue is so bad. So everybody kept breaking and laughing and they kept having to refilm scenes so that she could get her dialogue out. One of the other big cut cameos was Ben Affleck as his Daredevil. In the movie, there's a joke with Elektra saying that it's okay that he died, like it's not a big deal, which is mostly a joke about her and Ben Affleck having been married and divorced in real life since the events of her showing up for the first time in that Daredevil movie. If you didn't realize, her character also wears Daredevil's utility belt throughout the movie. They cut his cameo scene mostly for budget, also because he wouldn't have had as big a role in the movie, like he wouldn't have been part of this resistance team. It would have been more on par with Henry Cavill's cameo scene as Wolverine. And even though Kevin Feige revealed that they let them do pretty much anything they wanted to in the movie, there was one joke that Disney made them change because it was too crazy. 
They wouldn't say what the original joke was, but the joke they replaced it with was when Deadpool calls Disney out for lying to him, making it feel like Pinocchio stuck his nose up his butt and then started lying. Basically a butt stuff joke. So the original joke was worse than that, if you can imagine. My assumption is that it involved Mickey Mouse doing Deadpool in the butt. Like it was butt stuff involving Mickey Mouse, and that's what they didn't want. There were many other versions of the entire movie itself. Like I said, Ryan Reynolds pitched 20 different versions to Kevin Feige before he said yes. Before Fox bought Disney, like years ago after Deadpool 2, originally Deadpool 3 would have been a lower budget road trip movie, Midnight Run style, with Deadpool and Wolverine. Like not too different from what we actually saw in this new movie. But it wouldn't have had any crazy multiverse stuff or crazy cameo scenes. Then after Disney bought Fox and Ryan Reynolds was like pitching the new version of Deadpool 3 to Kevin Feige before Hugh Jackman came on board, there were like 20 different versions of the movie. Then after Disney bought Fox and Ryan Reynolds started pitching Deadpool 3 again, but before Hugh Jackman signed on, there were all these 20 different versions that involved crazy different plots. They probably would have had a lot of Wolverine and X-Men jokes, but no actual Wolverine cameo scenes. One version would have been a road trip movie with just Deadpool and Dopinder going across country, much lower budget. One version was going to be an ultra low budget, $5 million Sundance indie movie style movie, like super low budget. Imagine Ryan Reynolds filming the movie in his backyard, like that kind of low budget. One version would have been this total fake out style movie called Axe Cop that they would have filmed purposefully to be a terrible movie and film Deadpool and Wolverine kind of like a secret movie that they would have released for like 15 people in theaters. So the Axe Cop movie was meant to be about two cops that shared one brain. It would have been Hugh Jackman and Wolverine. They would have released it in theaters and like 15 people would have gone to see it because it would have looked so bad. Then he said the idea is that a couple minutes into that movie, it would have switched over to the actual Deadpool and Wolverine movie as you see it in theaters now. So it would have been like a secret release of Deadpool and Wolverine, making people think that it was like some other terrible movie. My assumption is that after that, his idea is that people would have heard about Deadpool and Wolverine being secretly in that movie on social media. Then they would have gone to see the Axe Cop film just so they could see Deadpool and Wolverine. You can instantly understand why Kevin Feige said absolutely not to that movie. Like, no way, hard pass. Why don't we just release a Deadpool and Wolverine movie and tell people to go see that instead? Like, we don't need to secretly release it. There was also a longer deleted scene of Channing Tatum's gambit during the actual post credit scene, paying off his joke earlier in the movie about having been born on the Void planet. The whole idea, like the whole joke of the character is he isn't sure if he was born on the void or in another universe because he never got his movie made. So he never got another universe to actually be from. So at the end of the movie, Deadpool and Wolverine convince Hunter B-15 and the TBA to send all the resistance group to their original universes that they came from. So like Blade goes back to the original Blade universe. Elektra goes back to that Ben Affleck Daredevil universe. But because Gambit didn't have a universe to go back to, he was just stuck on the void. So like you see him in the background of the actual post credit scene on one of the monitors just standing around with nobody there because he doesn't have a universe to go back to. This also answers the question of how X-23 wound up with Deadpool and Wolverine during their shawarma scene with the Kevin Feige's famous pizza joke. Normally X-23, because she comes from the future of the Logan movie universe, like she's a much older version of that version of X-23, she would have gone back to the distant future. I think the reason why she wound up with them in present day in 2024 is just because Wolverine and Deadpool asked them to bring her to this time period because this version of Wolverine has now become her surrogate father again. Papa bless. I'm also pretty sure they're going to bring Daphne Keene back during Secret Wars when Hugh Jackman's Wolverine also comes back. Cannot wait to see her in a version of the yellow suit. They said early on there are about 70 different cameos in a billion other storylines that wound up getting cut from the movie. So if they reveal any more of those, I will try to do more videos for everything. Because the movie is making so much money, like almost a billion dollars as of me posting this video, it'll probably cross a billion dollars in the next couple weeks. Deadpool and Wolverine will probably be back before Avengers Secret Wars, but they haven't said exactly how that's going to work. Ryan Reynolds also said he wasn't sure if they were going to let him make Deadpool 4. Now, because they're making so much money, of course, they're going to do Deadpool 4, but probably not till after Secret Wars. It's Wolverine. It damn straight it is. Disney brought him back. They're going to make him do this till he's 90. They truly will make both Ryan Reynolds and Hugh Jackman do this until they are 90. 
There are a bunch more Comic-Con videos I'm still working on. Like I said, D23 is this weekend. There'll be a bunch more Marvel trailers from that. Hopefully we'll get that first Daredevil Born Again trailer. So I'll try to do videos for all that stuff in the next couple of days. Be sure to enable alerts for my channel so you don't miss any of that. Everybody click here for my full Deadpool and Wolverine Easter eggs video for the entire movie and click here for that Fantastic Four Comic-Con trailer. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one.